Hey guys, Jason Schaffer here of M0A.com and yesterday I gave you guys this very METAR here asking you if you could decode it. And Larry, again, thank you so much for sending this METAR in. I really appreciate it. Anytime you guys have questions or have something cool you want to share with me, nine times out of ten we end up making a video about it. So feel free to send that over. So anyways, what I want to do with you now is I want to share with you that answer. I'm going to go over it briefly. And I'm going to kind of teach and explain as I go here. And then this will all be um, transcribed into plain English uh, underneath this video so you'll be able to see it. So first off uh, is our airport. This is Ann Arbor, Michigan. Makes complete and total sense. Great. Uh, moving on now to our date and time. Follow along with my cursor here. The first two numbers are the date. This came out on the 30th. At what time? At 11.53 Zulu time. So... That would be red on the 30th at 11.53 Zulu. The next area is our winds, okay? First three numbers are the wind direction. Wind, 350. Next two are the velocity at 22 knots. However, right here we have a G, which means gusting. Gusting to 31 knots. Anytime I see a G, it is just... Think of that as a very inconsistent wind. It is not going to be a great day for flying anytime you see gusting. And I'm just being honest with you there. This would read winds 350 at 22, gusting to 31. Again, we don't say things like 22, we don't say 31. It's 350 at 22, gusting to 31 knots. Okay, you got to learn to talk like a pilot. All right, um, 10 SM. This is 10 statute miles of visibility. A METAR only. Um, shows you out to 10 statute miles. So you know what, the visibility today may be 20 statute miles, uh, but they're only gonna show you out to 10, and obviously they'll show you if it's well less than 10. Okay, the minus RA over here, the minus means light, and the RA means rain. So there is light rain in the area, um, or at, this, at Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, BKN is broken. What's broken? Well, the clouds are broken. Remember, we have few scattered, broken, and overcast as our layers there. So a broken layer at what altitude? Well, this would read 1,700 feet, 1,700 feet. Remember, hundredths place, thousandths place, ten thousandths place. Okay, so that's how you read that there. We have another broken layer, BKN broken layer, at 2,000 500 feet and then we come down over here to OVC now an overcast layer at 3,900 feet you can see how we're building this 3d picture of the broken layer at 17 the broken layer at 25 now an overcast layer at 3,900 feet you can see how we're building this three-dimensional picture okay um, this weird kind of improper fraction with a letter in it that doesn't make any sense what the heck is this thing well that is our temperature is the first part followed by our dew point and this is in degrees celsius or centigrade so it's two degrees celsius at ann arbor michigan the m is what the m means minus it is a negative number so the dew point is minus one so temperature two dew point minus one remember we talked about previously close temperature and dew point is bad well here we have a pretty close temperature and dew point and just look at what's happening weather wise okay continuing on here the altimeter um, a is for your altimeter split the difference here and put your decimal in there the altimeter is 29.48 all right so there's your altimeter for you now getting on to some hard stuff RMK simply means remarks. AO2, this is something you need to know. Um, there's two things here. It could either say AO2 or AO1. AO2 means they do have an automatic precipitation discriminator at that field. And right now you're saying, Jason, what on earth is an automatic precipitation discriminator? All that simply means is it can tell me, yes, Jason, it's raining, snowing, sleeting, hailing, you know, freezing rain. It can tell you that stuff. Whereas an AO1 that does not have an automatic precipitation discriminator, that's what that means, can just say there's something falling from the sky. It's wet. I don't know what it is. Okay. The AO2 can discriminate, which we'll see happens up here in just a little bit. Um, okay, PKWND, 
PK means peak, WND means wind, peak wind. So the, uh, it's exactly what it says. It is the most intense wind they've had over the past hour. So peak wind, it came from where? 330 at 35. So there was a peak wind gust that came from 330 at 35 knots. When did it happen? It happened at 1142 Zulu. So really, looking at this time this came out, not a whole lot, you know, not too long ago. So they're getting some serious 35 knot gusts occasionally. Um, you know, that's their peak wind so far at Ann Arbor, Michigan. That's a, that's a serious wind. All right. Let's continue on here. Now it's getting really, really tough. And you're not going to see this a whole lot, but this is tough. UP means unknown precipitation. You're saying right now, you're saying, wait a second, Jason. You just told me over here with the AO2 that they do have an automatic precipitation discriminator. Well, they do. So why are they showing a UP, an unknown precipitation? Well, I'll show you why after I read through all this stuff here. So UP unknown precipitation the e means ended the unknown precipitation ended 12 minutes past the hour it began again the b means begin 29 minutes past the hour and then it ended again 31 minutes past the hour kind of confusing but we'll continue on here okay ra means what ra means rain the B means begin. So rain began 12 minutes past the hour. Okay. And then SN means snow. So snow began 15 minutes past the hour and then ended. The E means ended 20 minutes past the hour. So this is where the unknown precipitation comes into play. It was raining and it was snowing. And you know what? There was probably the entire time a combination of rain and snow. So right now your automatic precipitation discriminator is going, I think it's raining. I think it's snowing. It's somewhere in between. The thing is totally confused. So it came out with a UP, unknown precipitation. There's something falling from the sky. It's a combination of rain and snow. Um, so there it is. All right. SLP. SLP is your sea level pressure. I once had a student, I asked them, what does SLP mean? They said, does that have anything to do with being slippery? <laughs> I said, no, <laughs> but I appreciate the effort. Um, SLP is sea level pressure. Now, first things first, you want to add a decimal point right here. So making it 98.7. Bam, we've done that. Now, Let's pretend to either add a nine or a 10 right here. You wanna either add a nine or a 10, whichever makes this number closest to 1000. Keep in mind, you just add a decimal point here. So with a decimal point here, you add a nine here to make it 998.7. That's the number that makes us closest to 1000. So now you have your pressure, your 998.7 in, listen to this one, hectopascals. Why on, what's a hectopascal? Why on earth do I need to know hectopascals? Well, usually the military is the only organization that I know of that would use hectopascals. Um, we don't use it here. Um, that's what we have our altimeter setting for, but it's basically the same thing. They, some people use hectopascals, okay? Um, moving on now, P. The P is the precipitation that's fallen in the past hour. Literally split the difference right here and add a decimal point. So 0, 0.01 inches of precipitation have fallen in the last hour. Thus the light rain. It's very light rain. Not a whole lot's falling. Uh, it's probably borderline mist almost. The six group over here, the six means uh, precipitation that's fallen in the past six hours. So in the past six hours, again, split the difference. 0, 0 0.01 inches of precipitation in the past six hours. Continuing on now to the seven group over here. Somehow they, the FA decided that the seven group means precipitation that's fallen in the past 24 hours. How they get that from a seven, I don't know. Why didn't they just put a two four there? That much I don't know either. 
Um, but again, split the difference and 0, 0, 0.01 inches of precipitation have fallen in the past 24 hours. Almost done now. Coming over here now to the T. You will see this one a lot, by the way. The T is your exact temperature and dew point. Okay, that's what the T tells you. The zero right here means the number is positive. And then you want to skip ahead out of your decimal point right here. So a positive 1.7 degrees Celsius, which makes sense because up here we said it was 2 degrees Celsius. Since it was 5 or above, they simply just round it up and call it 2 degrees Celsius. In reality, it's 1.7. All right, continuing on down to the exact dew point, which is right here. The one means the number is negative. Well, duh, that's why I had the minus up here. The one means the number is negative. Split the difference, put your decimal point right here, and you get 1.1. So a negative or a minus 1.1 is our dew point, which completely jives with what we have up here. All right, now continuing on. The one group here. The one group is our highest temperature over the past six hours, which we get, again, same thing, zero means the number is positive, 2.2. So 2.2 degrees Celsius is our highest temperature over the past six hours, whereas the two group means our lowest temperature over the past six hours, which is 1.2. Seven. Why on earth are they even telling us this stuff? Well, when you're flirting this close to the freezing level and freezing level possibly being at the surface, because remember a METAR is a routine surface observation, um, you want to know the spread. You want to know the highest and lowest temperature over the past six hours. Have we even been flirting with the freezing level? Is it at the surface? Okay, so the one group highest over the past six hours, the two group lowest over the past six hours. And this last one is probably the toughest one to understand. This last one, all you're required to know that the five means this is the barometric tendency over the past three hours. What has been the pressure's tendency over the past three hours, either climbing or descending? Uh, the reason I say you're not totally required to know this is because I literally taught this on my CFI check ride, and the examiner, after I got done, looked over at me and said, that's cool. I always wondered what that meant. And I looked at him like, are you serious right now? Um, so the five group is the three hour barometric tendency. The six means the pressure has decreased. It's on a scale from one to 10. 10 mean the pressure's really decreased. One mean the pressure's really increased. Five mean the pressure stayed the same. So six is the pressure is just barely decreased. Um, you want to simply add a decimal point right here. This also is in that funny term, hectopascals. The pessure has decreased 1.0, 1, one hectopascal over the past three hours. Now, and again, this is a really, really tough METAR. Do I expect you guys to know all this stuff? No. What do I expect you to know? Well, you need to know how to read all the way up to really about over here. You need to know the peak wind stuff. You need to know the exact temperature and dew point stuff. You need to know sea level pressure. Um, this one you can kind of work your way through a little bit, um, but you need to know the basics. And what I loved in your comments is a lot of you guys posted, said, listen, I saw the gusting and I said, I'm not flying today. Or you looked and you saw you know, these nasty lower ceilings and said, I'm a VFR pilot, there's no need to be flying today. You saw light rain, you knew you weren't flying that day. Um, Making a great go or no go decision, you know, doesn't take you understanding, you know, the pressure change over the past three hours. You know, you don't need to understand all that stuff. You need to know what it takes to, for you to make a great go and no go decision. For a lot of you, for my students, it's just seeing the G. If you see a G in the winds, I'm sorry, we're not going flying today. That's just not, you know, conductive to what we need to do today. Um, so what does it take for you to make a great go and no go decision is the ultimate question. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, any other questions you guys have, feel free to shoot me an email. And most importantly, guys, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.